Hello, my name is Christian Boy Nielsen and I'm the chairman or president, as we said, uh, abroad Denmark uh, for Gladsaxe and Søborg Badminton Club. I have been the chairman for almost 20 years now uh, in our uh, fantastic club. Uh, our club is uh, located in the greater uh, Copenhagen area, uh, close to Copenhagen, about seven kilometers from Copenhagen. Uh, we have really good facilities here. We have uh, two badminton halls with five uh, badminton court, uh, court in each uh, hall, and this only badminton. So Christian, this is one of two badminton halls? Yes. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, this is only badminton specific, right? Yes, it's only badminton specific. As you can see, we have five really good badminton courts. Uh, with uh, some really good uh, facilities here. Uh, you can see we have uh, speakers, we have all the things uh, here. Uh, it's really great. It's actually a really, really old badminton hall. It's from 1936. Because you can really hear when you hit the, the, hit the shuttle. If you hit the shuttle. Yes, if you hit the shuttle. <laughs> so Christian, we're now in the second hall at Gladsaxe Super Badminton Club. And uh, I noticed this is a lot different than the other hall. But what's special about this one? Uh, about this one is very special. It's, of course, it's, uh, it's only f about 42 years old, this hall. It was built in 1981. Um, and the other one was from 1936. Um, so it's, uh, the sound here is a lot different compared to the other. Uh, all the coaches actually love to be here because the sound is not that let, let high, high and uh, clear as in the other. But you still have these five badminton courts. Um, you have a really high to the ceiling as well um, compared to the other. Um, but it's a really good roof and we have all the things here. So it's, it's a really good badminton hall as well. And it's close to the other hall. There's only 15 meters between, so we actually have the good things that like we have two training sessions at the same time, as we do with, uh, with our youth de department. But also, also, we can have one big training in two halls, so we can actually have up to like 40 players at the same time. And they keep this where you are together in the training, even if it's in two courts. And I noticed that, uh, like many clubs in this area of Denmark, I think it will become a very intimate experience because there aren't really that many seats. No, yeah. but that's a good thing. You still have the opportunity to people can sit close to the courts. You give this intimacy to feel you close to the uh, to the court and to the players. And you have in a lot of uh, halls in, Baton, in in Denmark, badminton halls, where you are close to the courts. And you have to have the same to uh, Denmark Open uh, in, uh, in badminton. In Odense, where you're really close to the course, is one of the good things uh, about Denmark Open uh, Super Series 750 uh, tournaments. You're close, and I know for all the players there, actually, they're really happy about it because they can feel the uh, expectations and they can feel uh, the crowd. We have a lot of uh, youth teams in the club, over 15, and we have uh, some senior teams as well, as well and a lot of uh, senior plus uh, teams as well. Uh, we use a lot of effort here in the club to our youth department. We uh, use a lot of re resources to uh, coaches and we have a lot of volunteers as well here in the club. Uh, and the whole club, Gladsack Super Badminton Club, is actually based on, on volunteers. We only have pay, uh, pay to our coaches and otherwise we have only one person who is the administrator of the club on part time. Uh, who get some money from the club as well. So um, yes, we're really happy for our club and uh, look forward to tell you more, more about that. Is this a new club? No, we actually, in a couple of months, we can actually celebrate our 75, 75 years anniversary. Uh, but the club is actually uh, older than that because it was actually two clubs that in 1948 um, uh, get together. So the oldest uh, of the two clubs is actually from 1932, so it's over 90 years old now. Um, but we have a yes, have a long history, um, and it's one of the oldest clubs in Denmark actually, which uh, count from 1932. So uh, we are uh, looking forward to celebrate our anniversary in two months' time. So Christian, in order to run a successful badminton club, which are the three most important things in in your opinion? 
in uh, in my opinion the most important thing is actually the volunteers in the club uh, because in a club like ours is uh, everything is volunteers we had a lot of volunteers in the club and we don't have the volunteers in the club we don't have any club um, the next thing is really important is the youth department because that's the future for the club and we are really um, aware of we have to develop our youth department all the time because if they get if they play as youth players in the club they will follow and play uh, afterwards in the club as well so that's the future of the club and the next thing uh, the, the third thing is actually development because it's really important we always develop the club and we always develop our activities and all the things we do in the club because if we don't have any development we don't we don't we will not have a club in the future uh, Christian you mentioned earlier in the interview about Gladsaxe Søborg Badminton Club that you're also a board member at Badminton Denmark. Yes, correct. Uh, tell us a little bit about what what your role is in terms of your activities with Badminton Denmark. Yes, I'm in the, in the board of Badminton Denmark. Uh, I started in 2015 because I was uh, at that time I was elected as uh, the chairman of Badminton København, which is the re regional uh, part of uh, Badminton uh, here in Denmark. Uh, and a year later, I actually get uh, in uh, to be head of the finances in, in the board. Uh, so I'm into really a lot of things in, in Badminton Denmark. Um, and for last year, I was actually uh, acting, the C acting CEO of Badminton Denmark because we, uh, our CEO was uh, stopping. He was fired. Yes, correct. Yeah. <laughs> so you stepped in as an interim CEO for yes. uh, a period of time, and yes. now there's a new CEO yes. employed at Badminton Denmark. Yes. So now your role is strictly on the board. Yes. Only. Christian, you mentioned volunteers as being one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, in order to, to run a club. So what have you done at Gladsaxe Søbo or Badminton Club in order to... Uh, attract and retain a good group of active volunteers. We have a lot of have done a lot of things. Uh, first of all, when I get a chairman for almost 20 years ago, the first thing I said to myself: never say no, uh, because it's important when people come with some ideas. Or uh, you should not kill it with a say no, because it takes all the motivation and all the effort people want to do it. Uh, the other things is you have to give the responsibility to other people, not just in the board, but in the whole uh, club. So they have the opportunity. Sometimes it will not go the way you have thought it will go or the way you hope it will go, but you still have to give them responsibility so they can take uh, action and they can make the effort into it. Um, and the second thing I, th I think is really important is actually that uh, you have to say thanks to them. And you have to tell all the other people, we have a lot of volunteers who make a big effort. And we have, here and then in the Gladstock Sue Badminton Club, uh, we have a dinner or party for all the volunteers uh, every year. We invite all the people, not only the one who sit in the board or other, play, other uh, sections of the club, but all the people who make a volunteer effort for the club. And we have a dinner where we uh, uh, thanks them and... Uh, <coughs> get them in and have the, some, uh, a lovely uh, evening. But the good thing about that is actually you get them together. Because sometimes when you volunteer and you just, you can be a team manager for a team, or uh, you can get this feeling you're alone. But here can you see how many actually make a volunteer effort for the club. And that's really important. And the other things that happen is actually when you put them together and they talk, they get a lot of ideas. And we have actually, we have a good idea where we have some from the youth department and some from the senior department who say, sit next to each other to the dinner. And they said, why we don't make some training with the young people together with the senior plus? And then make half a year afterwards, they have this uh, training together. And that you can see, you get these things, they're starting to growing up because you put people together. So that's a, a really good way to do it, actually. And we have not seen that when, when we started this uh, uh, e, uh, uh, yearly um, dinner, but we can see how it works now and we'll do it every, every year now. It's a really, really good uh, way to do it. 
Uh, that is awesome. So if I'm understanding this correctly, so first and foremost, uh, don't say no yes. uh, to people's ideas. Uh, let them help if they want to. Yes. Get many hands, many minds together yes. to share the responsibilities and then show gratitude. Yes. Uh, towards and you do that with a yearly dinner where you invite everyone who's contributed throughout the year yes which sort of reinforces their status as a volunteer and as an added bonus generates a lot of new ideas that people can work together to uh, to see to fruition in the coming period of time yes and you still have you have to see how big is the community in our club together how I can see all the volunteers we have a big youth uh, tournament here for a couple of weeks ago in in the weekend and there was over 30 volunteers up and they were just do it together because it's, you get this uh, feeling you're doing together. It's a really strong feeling yeah. compared to if you do it alone. So be aware of put them together and make them something together. Uh, that's a really strong feeling. But let's talk a little bit about badminton in Denmark. Yes. Uh, I think it's fair to say that there are a little over 90,000 active members almost 100,000 oh you're so positive <laughs> almost 100,000 uh, what would you say is the secret to the success of badminton in Denmark yeah there's there's several things that the secret but first of all uh, we have this we call uh, clubs or for eninger where we have all the volunteers we are almost uh, 700 badminton clubs here in Denmark uh, and we have a long tradition It's one of the biggest sport here in Denmark uh, and we have all these volunteer club. Uh, that's one of the mile, uh, one of the uh, stones that are uh, positive for badminton here in Denmark. And the second thing is actually the coaches. We have a lot of good coaches here in Denmark, and we have tradition to edu educate coaches uh, from small kids up to uh, the highest level and you can see we have some really good national coaches here in Denmark and they actually go before they get national coaches here in Denmark typical they went to other countries and get the experience to be a national coach before they come back so we have a lot of uh, really good coaches at all levels uh, very good uh, if you look at uh, Denmark and compare Denmark to other countries would you say the fact that a lot of badminton courts were built uh, shortly after the, the sport became popular is one of the reasons why so many people have had an opportunity to start playing badminton and through those uh, circumstances also managed to develop players who became uh, some of the best in the world. Yes, as a, of, as a, the most important things actually, of course, you have the facilities. Uh, that's really, really important. And we have, we have a lot of badminton halls here in Denmark, but it's very different compared to which areas in Denmark you are because if you go in Copenhagen, where well, a lot of people live uh, here in Denmark, there's not many badminton halls uh, compared to if you get outside uh, of Copenhagen and also the small countries where have a lot of badminton halls. Um, but the other things that's important is actually good thing about badminton is it's a, both an individual sport, but it's a team sport as well. And here in Denmark, we have a really, really big team tournament. It's, it's actually really important. And we have it from under nine to over uh, 70 uh, years old players. So I think that's more, most important because you have this team together. You step up as a team and you play as a team, but you still train. You need to train with others to be to be better badminton players. So you you're depending on all the all your teammates as well. Uh, very very good. When we look at the future of the sport in Denmark, I don't think it's any secret that the sport is not as big as it used to be. Uh, what do you foresee in the future? More or less the same, or what's going to happen? Um, if you look back to like 20 or 30 years ago, there's a lot of lot more badminton players in Denmark, uh, and then we have a we go step down a little bit, uh, not a little bit, quite a lot actually, to be honest. Um, but the last five to ten years, we're actually growing, and we're still growing, and I hope we can get over the 100,000, maybe 130,000 uh, who play. Uh, but it's still depending on, on, of our clubs, uh, and especially we get outside in the country where we need to secure, we still have the badminton clubs. So they're not only a sport in the big cities, but in whole Denmark. Is it really that important for Denmark to have players at the very, very top? Or would we be satisfied if we had some at the sub-level uh, internationally, even if they are all outside the top 32? 
I think it's important we have some in, in, in what we call top class or world class to pay, uh, and the play about the titles and the, and the medals because they will inspire a, a lot of young people to play badminton. Uh, I don't think we can, the sport cannot survive uh, only with them because a lot of other things, but I think they are part of it and I think it's really important we still have this interest to be the best of in the world uh, and we should always try to get that uh, and to be that as well.